Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now you've bought yourself a nice smart TV and you want to connect it up to the internet so you get access to streaming services like Netflix or Disney Plus or whatever it is that you use. Now I'm assuming in your house you've probably got a router from your internet service provider and you haven't done much else. You haven't added any extra equipment. You haven't wired it all for optical through the whole house. You've kind of got the default setup, but you want to connect that TV to the internet. So what are your options and how do you do it? Well, if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so the quickest way to connect your smart TV to the internet is using Wi-Fi. Now that means you've probably already got Wi-Fi, as I said, from your internet service provider. You're probably used to connecting your smartphone or a tablet to the Wi-Fi in your house and connecting the television is very, very similar either during the initial setup process when you first plug in the television or by going into the menus and then settings, you need to find the menu that talks about Wi-Fi or wireless networking. And from there, you've got two options. One, you can just pick the SSID, that's the, uh, the name of your Wi-Fi network, and then type in the password by kind of scrolling around uh, with the remote control on the little keyboard that will probably appear on the screen. Or you could use a WPS, so you press the WPS activation on the television and on your router, and then the two kind of talk to each other and get you connected up. And that's it, you're up and running, and the TV will most likely have a way of checking that it's working and that everything uh, is as expected. However, there are some problems with using Wi-Fi. For example, here in my house, my Wi-Fi hotspot from my internet service provider is at one end of the house in my home office, and at the completely other end of the house is where I have my smart TV. And there are several walls in between, and also not only that, there are other people in the house are using Wi-Fi, and the whole Wi-Fi area network can be a bit you know, busy because of all the radio waves going around, different devices, even neighbors' Wi-Fi devices can interfere with the speed that you get on your Wi-Fi. So if you find that while you're watching movies uh, or TV programs on a streaming service, you kind of get that thing where it pauses and you have to, and it goes round and round and round, you have to wait for it to kind of catch up. Or if you find that while you're watching something, other people in your house complain that they can't use YouTube or they can't do some gaming or whatever because it's all interfering with each other, then you have to explore other options to improve the performance of your internet connection for your smart TV. Now, the first option is to use a Wi-Fi extender. Now, I have a whole video here on this channel about how to use a Wi-Fi extender and all of the pros and the cons and actually how it really works. Now, the key thing in like five seconds is you need to place the Wi-Fi extender halfway between your router and your television. That way it has a good connection back to your router and a good connection to the TV itself. However, you may find that won't actually improve the overall performance because the Wi-Fi extender has to do two jobs. It has to receive and send and so automatically kind of it's at running at half speed because half the time it's spending sending receiving the other half of the time it's it's spending sending out through two directions in both directions so it's not always the best answer another option is to use mesh networking now i have again a video here on this channel on how you set up mesh networking the best option is one with tri-band mesh networking Again, the video here on the channel. And that basically means because it has multiple frequencies that it can work through and multiple radio circuits actually in the device itself, it means that it can receive on one radio and transmit on the other. So it's not doing half and half. It's actually got two dedicated or three for tri-band dedicated circuits for sending information back and forth. And that really can improve the throughput that you get from your smart TV. Again, with a mesh network, if you've got, let's say, two additional nodes, the first one you'd want to place relatively uh, close to your router, maybe say one one third of the distance from your router to your uh, lounge and then the second one maybe in the lounge and let the TV connect to that and then it can connect down through the mesh network. Again, whole video on this here on this channel. Another option is to use a Wi-Fi extender with a cable. So what you can actually do is you can actually run a cable part way through your house and then plug in a Wi-Fi extender and the Wi-Fi extender then talks to your original router over a cable and it only spends its time doing wireless stuff while talking to your smart TV. So this whole problem of having to send and receive over to, over the radio at the same time disappears because now half of the traffic goes over an ethernet cable. And again, I've got a video here on this channel talking exactly about that if you want more details.
So one way, as I've said, you can improve the performance of the connection from your smart TV is to improve your Wi-Fi network, either through an extender or through mesh networking or through an extender with a cable. In fact, you can use cables even in some mesh networking setups. So by improving your Wi-Fi, you may get better performance from your smart TV out onto the internet and those around you in your house may see improvements because there's less traffic in the airways making congestion for their gaming or watching YouTube or whatever it is that they're doing. But the best way to make sure you get the really the best performance and not to interfere with other people in your house who are using the Wi-Fi is to use an Ethernet cable. You can actually wire up your television directly to the internet. Now on the back of your smart TV there will be an RJ45 plug, that's an Ethernet plug, and then you just need an ethernet cable. Now at this point again you've got several options. The first one is you can run a cable directly from your router that's let's say in your home office or wherever it is directly through to your TV. Now as I said here in my house that could be quite complicated because there's several rooms to go through. What do I do? Do I go around doors and along skirting boards? Do I go up into the ceiling and then try and run along the ceiling and then come down into the lounge? You know, cables being strung randomly across the house is what no one wants to see. So you need to find a neat solution to get that cable through to your smart television. A similar option is to add a gigabit uh, network switch to your uh, network, again, through a cable and run that, as I said, however you can, and put it somewhere in your lounge, which will allow you then to connect up your smart TV directly to the cable. And that means you could move around your television in the lounge at some point. If you rearrange the furniture, you haven't then just got this cable that just came out exactly where it was before. You've got the switch somewhere in the lounge and you can connect up to that with just a couple of meters of cable. So therefore you've got some flexibility. And again, I've got a whole video here on this channel on how to add a gigabit switch to your existing network. Now, if wiring things up isn't your what you want to do, if you don't want to start running cables from one end of the house uh, to the other, then you can use power line adapters. Now, power line adapters, basically, you get a pair of adapters that you plug into the mains. You plug one in near your router where you from your internet provider and one near your smart television. Then using the wiring, electricity wiring in your house, it can send the signals from one end of the house to the other. So you don't have to run a big cable from one end to the other. Now, Powerline can be a bit of a complicated area, a bit of a minefield, mainly because of marketing. There's basically just two standards, AV and AV2, but basically because of the, the you know, how marketing, I want to make my one sound better than yours. You get, you know, mine's a 500 megabit switch. No, mine's a 600 megabit switch. No, this is Powerline 1000, Powerline 2000. And, and even after I've studied all the spectrum, sometimes I'm looking at all the different adverts from all the different uh, kind of equipment makers. And I'm like getting, hold on, is that AV1? Is that AV2? What's the real speed? Basically, okay, if you get yourself, let's say an AV1, 500 megabits a second, 600 megabits a second uh, a power line switch, you're gonna get about 70 or 80 megabits a second down that line. And that's actually not bad because you're probably, your smart TV's only got 100 megabits, that's fast ethernet, only got a 100 megabit connector onto it. And so all you have to do, if you're getting 70 out of that, that's pretty good and that's gonna really improve your performance. If you go with an AV1000 or AV2000 or that, then you are gonna get greater performance, maybe up to 250 uh, megabits a second. And again, certainly if your TV's only got 100 megabits ethernet port on it, then that's absolutely perfect. Now you can pick these up relatively cheaply and they really are easy to install. The instructions are pretty simple. You plug one in, plug the other, you pair them up by pressing some buttons on them and that's it. You then plug an ethernet cable into one end into your router from your ISP and the other end ethernet cable either into another switch as I cover in the add a gigabit ethernet switch to your network video or directly into the back of your smart TV and basically it should all work. Now personally I've been using the power line solution myself here in this house for years and it's never had a single problem uh, and I'm really really impressed and I've actually got the quite the older one the AV standard one the slower one the 70 megabits a second one, okay? And I'm thinking now about upgrading to the higher one, but the performance has been really good with a wired connection from the smart TV. And therefore, when we're streaming a movie, let's say on Netflix into uh, the lounge on the smart TV, nobody else in the house is saying, well, where's all the Wi-Fi gone because I've, you're using it all up with your 4K movie. I can't even watch a YouTube video. It's okay, everyone is quite happy. Now there is another trick which uh, if you want me to, I'll make another video, please do tell me in the comments below. But if that 100 megabits a second that you've probably got built into your TV is not enough, then you probably can connect in a USB 
to ethernet adapter into your TV and actually get yourself a gigabit connection. And then if you put a gigabit switch somewhere in your house and you've got a gigabit connection, of course, at your end of your router, then of course you're gonna get the maximum uh, bandwidth inside your house. Now, of course, all of this stuff has to be covered by the caveat that once you go outside your house and onto the internet, that really does depend on the service that's provided by your internet service provider. If you have a slow one, you know, 10 megabits or 20 megabits a second, then that's the maximum speed you're going to get no matter what you have inside your house. If you've got fiber optic cable to your house, then that's a whole different story. So remember, this is all about what's happening inside your house. Once you go out onto the internet, that really is, you know, called the Wild West. It depends on what you've bought and what you're able to provide. Again, remote locations. Some people don't even have access to fast internet. In the middle of an inner city, probably you might have fire, but really does depend where you are, what you're paying, who your service provider, what country you're in. It really is quite a big difference. But we're talking about here what's inside of the house. Okay, so there you have it. How do you connect up your smart TV to the internet? Using Wi-Fi. If that's not fast enough, improve your Wi-Fi with network extenders or with mesh networking and if that's not good enough or you want the kind of the reliability of wired networking then stick in a wire directly from your tv to the router or using power line connectors and that'll be it you're all up and connected to the internet and you can watch uh disney plus or netflix whatever you want to watch all day long without any problems Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Sims. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, please stick around by subscribing to the channel. Don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains. And I also have a monthly newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address. You won't get any spam, but you will get my monthly newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.